Hey, this is Deion Dawkins, man, and you're listening to The Scoop on OwlScoop.com. You already know. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Scoop, OwlScoop.com's podcast, Season 9, Episode 29. I'm John DiCarlo. We've got a full house today, almost a full house. Declan Landis is on his way. He's in parts unknown right now, but should be here pretty soon. Uh, joined by Johnny Zewis, like Kyle Gauss, Rymir Vaughn, and like I said, soon to join us, Declan Landis. Lots happened. Lots happened since we last joined you here on The Scoop. I gave it a week off just because there was so much changing, uh, a lot going on. It didn't really make sense for us to record last week because there was a lot going on, a lot of unexpected stuff that ended up happening, of course, with the men's team, a, a team that won 10 games, excuse me, lost 10 games in a row, nearly went to the NCAA tournament. Uh, a lot going on with that program, a lot going on with the women's program, some football to talk, lots of great mailbag questions. So we're really, really excited to bring this episode to you. A lot of cool stuff ahead. The Scoop, as always, is brought to you by Greenspan and Greenspan Injury Lawyers. If you've been injured on the road or the highway and the crash was someone else's fault, the insurance company is not going to be on your side. You need us, Temple Law grads, who will fight hard to get the compensation that you deserve. We only get paid if we win, so in Pennsylvania or New York, call us today at 215-261-7359. That's 215-261-7359. And you can find them on the web at greenspans law. Dot com. That's greenspans-law.com. Like I said, guys, a lot to cover. How's everybody doing? Johnny, how was uh, how's Fort Worth? Oh, it was great, you know. I mean, Declan and I and Ryan and Jason worked the whole time, but it was it was good. We got um, to experience. That. that was the farthest I've ever been away from home, so yeah. it was definitely different. I also, I, I think I remember saying this too. I didn't realize that, like, People actually wore cowboy hats, like unironically. Yeah, like, it was just like a normal thing down there, which was very weird. Yeah, and you were a little nervous about the flight, correct? Oh yeah, I mean, I I, I wasn't I I hate flying just because like my my ears pop mm -hmm. and it happened and then they didn't pop for like twenty four hours after the flight. Um, but Ryan was the most nervous. He had Declan. He had to grab Declan's hand when we were up in the air because <laughs> we were going up. And there was like a well. First of all, to preface it, the flight attendant was going around. The, the flight was like a third. Hey, I filled. love this, by the way. You told me this yesterday. I think this is great. The flight was like a third filled, and the flight attendant just going through the aisle, and she was like, "Oh, like, are you guys okay with flying?" And Ryan goes, "No," and she goes, "Oh, well, just so you know, like, this is not going to be a good flight. It's going to be a bumpy one," and then just walks <laughs> away. But what, what do you and expect her to like, do? Who does that? He's not a he's not an infant. You don't need to lie to him. She's just giving him the truth. Like, hey, this might be a little bumpy, but like we're expecting that. Like, like, like I, I would rather you just not say anything in that. Like, if if, if he, she yeah. clearly asked him, or do you like flying? Because she was clearly terrified, and then only made it worse by saying, "This is not going to be good," and then walked away. Kyle, it's the difference between uh, our generations and this one. Am I right? No, I wouldn't. I wasn't saying that at all. More <laughs> just, that. just I like, just was trying to make you know, a joke. I would rather be told in advance, like, "Oh, by the way, prepare yourself for this," because like it could be a little bumpy out there. Like we're gonna get turbulence instead of them, like, "Oh, let's not like let's pull the veil of the the wool over his eyes and hope that he doesn't figure it out." Like, nah, you're an adult. You're all adults. But I, th I think by it the was, legal definition I think it was the of delivery. The adults. Also, I'm, I, I, I I took uh some. I'm a little annoyed that you're upset that you had to work while you were down there. <laughs> All we did was no, work. No, no. to get to that too. <laughs> I, oh, that's, I'm that's sorry. Not, that's not how I meant it. I'm sorry. I'm did you have that, to I'm do your that, job like, while you were on a business trip? <laughs> that's not. That's not how I meant it. All, all I meant is that we were like it was. I think the the part that was frustrating was that Temple women's and men's had the late game like every night. So it was like we couldn't enjoy like the nightlife in Texas. I think, and that was the part that like I was looking forward to. It was like the like at week we like we get the to work Tuesday the night day and, like, Fort night. Worth nightlife was just that, appealing to you. The, yeah, the I mean, I I, well, I just I wanted to experience the nightlife in Texas. I feel like that's not too much to ask. But I, again, again, I was not upset that we were working the whole time. I was upset at the fact that it was the night game every time and we were up till three or four in the morning. In fairness, if I, I was you, also upset by this because I was on the East Coast. So I had to stay up till midnight watching women's basketball. And guess yeah. who had to stay up later than everybody because once people file their stories, what do they do? They fall asleep. Hey, I, I, was, I was awake the whole time. You were? Uh, yes, I was. When I say I love the nightlife, what's the next line you think of? 
I like to boogie. There we go. On what the an disco. Ah. Uh, there we go. Yeah. There so now is. can we talk about the ridiculousness of the text message we got 10 minutes ago from Declan Landis <laughs> saying that he overslept look, until 1 p.m. <laughs> look, I was I was up doing work. OK, that's that's where we're going to leave it at. He has. Uh, I will say this till 6 a.m. Declan Landis has been burning the candle at both ends. Got a big WHIP radio. I've taken up this a freaking weekend. torch to the candle since November is what it's it feels a like. A little extreme, but hey. No, it's it feels like it. Yeah. So I'm sorry. I apologize, but I'm here. But he's here. That's, that's the most important thing. And he comes in with a, a he, he responded to my disco prompt. Yep. Nobody else did. I like the night. Does, does she say I love the nightlife? I love the nightlife, right? I think so. Yeah. John, Johnny was complaining that because the games were at night in Fort Worth, that you guys didn't get to experience everything that Fort Worth had to offer. I mean, Johnny, let's be real. What else did it have to offer? Yeah, exactly. I just, I, I just think that again. I thought I was upset at the, the that it was a night game every time. No, I, I'm with I would, you on that. I would have liked to, you know, have like a day game and then figure it out from there. I think that that was more like go to your nearest Applebee's and say, "Oh God, this these these." Uh... Look, half apps are cheap. You they know? are. It's it was that was a smart financial decision. Right across well, the street, to, so no Uber. It was I smart. Used to, I used to work at Applebee's during a time when they get, had unlimited chicken tenders. So I would start a shift, order chicken tenders half off for an employee discount, and then just every time you walk by the basket, a little chicken tender in the mouth. You're eating, at the end of the day, That's you're smart. eating 12, 15 chicken tenders over the course of a shift. That's very smart. Ryan, yeah. how many grams of protein is that a day for Kyle? I mean, it depends on what what like what the chicken was. Usually, a breast is like like seventeen. I think I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't got the numbers in front of me. The but. the cut of a chicken <laughs> is not a is not a universal measurement. It's not like you can be like, well, one chicken tender equals three ounces. Like he doesn't know. Like we don't know. We're just guessing. We don't even know if it was chicken. It was two thousand eight Applebee's. It might not have been chicken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get the scoop lawyers on that one. <laughs> that Applebee's is now My apologies a... to the general Chester County Applebee's. No, thing. that Applebee's is now either a FedEx office or a Mexican restaurant. I forget which. Okay. But... Rest in peace, Applebee's. I think it's a Mexican restaurant. Yeah, what's the name of the damn restaurant? I know it. There's like a two of them. Plaza Azteca or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Probably. No free shout outs, but we yeah. just. Oh, I would do just, free uh... shout outs for a Mexican restaurant. Yeah, let me know. <laughs> Famous number twenty nines, guys. Oh, John Smoltz. <laughs> got nothing for you. I did not even prepare for this. Demarco one. Murray twenty nine. Yes. So. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, yeah. I feel like there's been a lot of overlap between like players in like the high twenties, just wearing multiple numbers, same player. Mm-hmm. Kyle, well, what do you got? I said John Smoltz was my one. Um, yeah, Catfish Hunter. I'm in the orchestra. So was Catfish Hunter. <laughs> Nobody else but Kyle and I will get that. Yeah, I, I was gonna say I had no clue. Yeah, so, yeah. If we, we should do like a like a like a reader listener response. If you know what movie that's from and you listen to the scoop, tweet at us. Oh, I'm sure we'll that's... get thousands of responses on this. You oh, went yeah. into your Owen Wilson Countless voice people. for it. Like like you have like an Owen Wilson voice and you went into so your So was Wilson Catfish Hunter. Yeah. Oh wow. Wow. Yeah. Is, is Owen Wilson in the room with us? What was that impersonation? <laughs> that was that spot was on. That was Declan. <laughs> really? Thank you. Wait, real Declan, quick. Declan, no, real quick, real quick, real quick. This is this is completely out of left field. Declan, do a macho man Randy Savage for me. <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> oh yeah, Kyle. You put me on this podcast. Oh, we're the cream of the crop. <laughs> so good so good uh, jordan, jordan has started my son has started to say oh yeah a lot so i've started to do like a very bad macho man randy savage and my wife hates it she's like please stop doing this. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome oh that's good that's pretty good thank you well, that was very good thank you thank you what were we talking about Completely i bet in 15 up. minutes i'll be even funnier because <laughs> you're because you're drinking your because you're drinking your ghost again yes. no free shout outs but thank you johnny of course, no problem. Yeah, just like the guys on the New Heights podcast advocate for their energy drinks, you guys keep uh, going. I've always said that Jason Kelsey and I are very similar humans. Yeah, we do similar numbers again with their podcast. Hundred percent comparable. Hundred yeah, percent comparable. Yeah, we might even pull ahead this week. You never know. You know, we just need Johnny to start dating a pop star. You know, take one for the team here. <laughs> like, hey, I mean, if you, if if any of you got any any suggestions, I'm all ears. Anyway. 
famous number 29 is John Smoltz. Ooh. Very good. He was an analyst. I mean, he was a hell of a pitcher. He's so annoying. A fantastic I'm a guy player. who I'm a guy who hated the Braves, still does, but I don't I don't get the hate as an analyst. I don't think he talks too much. Like in general? I don't I don't mind. I just don't I, think he adds much to a broadcast. That's my issue with him. Like I think there are a lot of different people you could put in that chair that would be better. No, I'm saying something nice about the Braves. Chime in. Um, they're gonna win 102 games this year. Sorry, I was distracted. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really care too much about like any announcer to be honest. Like no, like when people say like, oh, I hate Joe Buck, like that doesn't bother me. Like Joe Buck doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. No one really upsets me that much, except, except for Ben Davis. Ben Davis is very bad at this. Oh, that's <laughs> valid. Yeah, that yeah. is valid. There's a lot I could say about that on that front, but you know, I don't know. Anyway, wasn't uh, Eric Dickerson 29? I think he won number yes. 29. Yes. Oh, yeah, I'm thinking a very good Colts running back had like a short burst of, of being a good running back, also good fantasy. Well, I think it was a good running back. It was good fantasy back. I don't even know if he's when? 20. I think he was. Uh, 2010-ish, maybe? Oh, this is guessing. I'm guessing. Colts? Joseph Adai. Uh, yeah, Joseph Adai. Yes, Joseph Adai. Yeah. I think Joseph Adai wore number 29. I I actually don't know. I think so. I but think so. I also can't remember if Mark McMillan wore number 29 for the Eagles. Played in the same defensive backfield as uh, as Eric Allen. I don't know. I feel like there just aren't a whole lot of number 29s coming. He did wear 29. Which one, Mark McMillan or Joseph Adai? Joseph Adai. Here we go. All right. Shady wore 29 before Congrats. he changed to 25. Oh yeah! Oh, there we go. I would not have guessed that. Yeah. Yep. Eric oh, Berry. Anything else, guys? I, In I, fairness, I that was pretty. Running backs only wear like ten numbers during that time. It was like, I mean, I guess yeah, they could wear up so. to. They could wear in the thirties. I think technically for fullbacks, but mm -hmm. yeah, the thirties are a new day. Although again, maybe we don't. Maybe we're in the the, the final days of the. Yeah. When are we bringing segment. in around this date? Around this date. Around this date. Yes. <laughs> Trends, anything. I think that the, the numbers bit is dying a slow death. Yeah. Yeah. We've done it only for six years now. I yeah. Keep, yeah. yeah. Keep keep uh, has it radically changed any of our lives? I don't think so. I think we got to stop topping, tapping into the well, you know? Yeah. I don't know if we're I really bettering society. Yeah. Time to switch around with this. So new era. Yeah. And have you, you know seen the is? things? Oh, have sure. you seen the things on TikTok now where like somebody will think of a, a word and the other person has to try to guess what word they're thinking of? We can do that every time. Like, and it's just like you tell them if they're getting closer or hotter. That's or on TikTok? Okay. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> just any word. I'm, yeah. I'm so, like, TikTok, if I was thinking of, what you're talking if about. I was thinking of, like, whatever, uh, a table saw, and then you guessed, like, yeah, hammer, I'd be like, ooh, that was close, but, like, it's like a 70. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Where, where, where you, oh, like, you give a number? Give yeah. A number. Yeah. It's like yeah. a one to 100 based on how close you are. Yes, I actually would enjoy that. That'd be a lot of fun. That would be kind of fun. For a guy who always says, like, yeah, I mean, I have TikTok. I'm not on it a lot. You know who brings up TikTok a lot? Kyle. I've never, yeah. never said I'm not on TikTok a lot. I've never said that. No, you've At said, least... like, I'm on TikTok, but I don't really use TikTok. I don't. Like, I don't not... post videos. I use TikTok in the sense of, like, I see TikToks. I think that's a pretty a standard big, use of the app. Guy, so. Can't relate. So you see everything three weeks after it happens. Perfect. That's when yeah. I need it. Yeah. Don't give me anything timely. You know. I had a segue. I forget where I was going with that. Oh, I said, uh, ushering in a new ushering era. a new era. The Temple men's basketball program now has to turn the page and usher in a new era. And boy, did they surprise us over the last uh, two weeks or so for a couple of different reasons. Um, what a sequence of events! So the last time that we recorded with you all this was pre them losing by 28 points to uab this was pre news breaking that their games have been monitored for quote a while by u.s integrity the watchdog firm that was monitoring some unusual gambling activity they pointed to the memphis game they pointed to that uab game there's nothing new that we know of that has come from that so anything we would say would be pure speculation but following that, they go to UTSA, they beat UTSA in the season finale, they beat UTSA 
in the first round of the conference tournament and then just go on this very much unexpected run that was uh, pretty interesting to see. Uh, I, I tweeted this, you know, obviously they went to five elite eights under John Chaney. They went to a bunch of NCAA tournaments under Fran Dunphy, won a couple of games, did not win a conference championship, but the fact that they went into Sunday with a chance to win a game or the right to go to the NCAA tournament was nothing short of wild. And the, Obviously, I, I think UAB, I'm not the biggest Andy Kennedy fan, but he's done a good job with that program. They're very deep. They're very athletic. They play a good game, but hell of a run for this team. We will see what happens in the transfer portal. Obviously, college basketball in 2024, heck of a lot different. If Adam Fisher and the staff can keep what they believe to be their core together, then yeah, you've got you've got uh, a lot to uh, a lot to build on. And that you know, for 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 next season. So did any of you, and I'm going to assume the answer is no. Anybody see this coming? Did any of you have any belief no. that no? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I was looking for somebody to just kind of like fire off a take and be like, yeah, I knew it was coming. Yeah, no, absolutely not. And I think like, you know, you, you, we walked into the arena. I mean, we, we wrote preview articles for every game down there and we walked into the arena thinking like, I guess with, Aside from the UTSA game, like thinking Temple has a chance, but uh, and I think this other team's too good. You know, like Temple has a chance, but this other team's just a little more talented. Yeah. And fair enough. Yeah. It was just crazy to see the, you know, how it played out, especially in the second halves of games. Like the, you they typically came out in the first half and um, just looked slow or couldn't get anything going. And the other team was stifling them and they'd get out to a 10, 15, 20 point lead. And then just somehow they Temple just found ways to stick around, and it was it was just shocking more than anything else being in there and being like, oh my gosh, like it, it wouldn't even feel like it. And you look at the scoreboard, and all of a sudden it was like a five point game or a three point game or a two point game. Um, so I think it was it was just more shocking than anything else. But I think even a bigger shock was the sort of response to it mm -hmm. as well, just from you know Temple fans sort of like rallying around the tough fun because of it which i think is huge um yeah just the whole the whole thing was just like beyond shocking yeah it's kind of cool when when they're playing good basketball and the fan base gets behind the program we haven't seen that in a, in a while i'm not I'm, i promise i'm not saying that to sound snarky or sarcastic i know this is kind of like a general question but what what's the intangible you guys were down there for most of the trip and then Jacob Smedley and Jake Gable kind of like took over our, our coverage from there and wrote some good stuff that you guys should check out on the site. What's the intangible piece that you guys saw when you were down there that you did not see throughout the regular season? Obviously, we know that High Senior Miller played well. We've been saying for weeks and weeks and weeks, hey, if his players are playing better complimentary roles around him, it allows him to play better. Shocker. That stuff happens. Uh, I didn't see him scoring 32 points against UAB and maybe going off as much as he did, but we can see that he's still a pretty good basketball player. What's the intangible piece, the feel around the team that was not there that allowed them to do what they did and almost did down there? I, I mean, I think it's going to sound like not corny, but just like the way that they were like it, it, Adam Fisher said, and all of them said it the whole time is the way that they did it together. And it was like you like you felt that when you were down there that you didn't I mean we were we were at every game this season at the Leo Chorus Center and it felt different like mm -hmm. down there with them on the court, the way they were playing. Like that you just had like a especially with all of like the noise that you had mentioned that it was kind of surrounding them coming into that coming down into Fort Worth, the way they were able to just kind of block it out and just move past it and just play the game of basketball and play together like we haven't seen them play at all. And I also think, I mean, it helps that Steve Settle had kind of a, a a really great tournament offensively, and he had five blocks against SMU, which was crucial in that game. So he had a really good tournament as well. So I think that really helped. Kyle, you've, you've covered a lot of Temple basketball. If you had to, again, I don't want to overhype it in the sense that at the end of the day, they fell short of a, uh, of a conference championship and NCAA tournament berth, but we would have expected that at the outset of the tournament. We just didn't expect them to be knocking on the door of it. It, when I say contextualize this thing, I'm not, not trying to put what they did down in Fort Worth among the pantheon of like going to five elite eights or something like that. But what they did, I think, was fairly significant in terms of changing the conversation of the direction of the program, again, provided they can keep the core together. How would you contextualize what you saw them do down there? 
I don't know if there's a if there's a similar moment in Temple history. I mean, a lot of people are going to point back to John Chaney's first year, where it was a pretty similar thing, a below 500 team. Um, they end up losing to West Virginia in the A-10 tournament after going on a bit of a run in the spectrum. But from like my perspective, the closest thing I can kind of compare it to is maybe that first dumpy team that won the A-10 um, in like 07, 08. Like, or I don't even know if that. Maybe the second one. Like one of them, I get like they're still better teams. They're 20 win teams. They like deserve to be in that running. But maybe that second one where they beat Xavier um, to then and then beat Duquesne. I feel like that was kind of like almost unexpected in my mind. But no, there I have no – it was the most – out of nowhere performance from Temple Sports that I've experienced in my 15, 16 years of covering Temple Sports. I really don't have a, an easy comparison. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk more about this basketball team in the mailbag. We have a lot of stuff to get to. The women's team, we've got some football to get to as well. But, you know, I think not surprisingly, Adam Fisher really kind of deflected any comment about, you know, what was going on or what, is going on with the, the U S integrity stuff and kind of deferred initially to the statement that the university put out. Um, Jeff Nyberg, who writes for the Philadelphia Inquirer on Sunday asked Heiser Miller, how do you block out the noise of the last 10 days? Basically referring to that being a distraction. It's a really simple response from Heiser, but I think it's worth mentioning because this team, wherever Whatever has gone on or not gone on, again, we don't know. They did not look like a guilt-ridden team that that wilted under pressure. Instead, they responded and played some really good basketball. This is Heiser Miller, Miller's response when he was asked about, quote-unquote, blocking out the noise. I mean, just just hoop. I mean, everybody just getting up and hooping and playing together, just trying to find ways to win. So, like, it really is no noise. It's just us, one game at a time, just trying to get the next win. Like today, we was just we was in a, another one game tournament. We just came up short, but we just been hooping. So again, I mean, Heiser Miller, all conference, well, all tournament team, thirty two points, a career high thirty two points. That is a that it's a record for the for the conference tournament, correct? I mean, granted, the league's only been around ten years, but uh, some really really good basketball from Heiser Miller, as Declan pointed out. Really good response from Steve Settle. We'll talk more about the team again in the mailbag. Got a lot of other stuff uh, to get to, so we will be circling back on this men's basketball team. The women's team, you guys were also down there in Fort Worth covering them, and uh, a handful of us got to talk to Diane Richardson yesterday, yesterday meaning Monday. We're recording this on Tuesday afternoon, and we'll, we'll get to that in a second, but different set of expectations going down there. And as Diane mentioned yesterday, I believe she mentioned this, they're kicking themselves because of, again, not to take anything away from Rice. I mean, that was a top-heavy league. We saw that down the stretch. A lot of teams right there in contention. But as game by game, we thought, wow, lining up pretty well for Temple, lining up pretty well for Temple, probably could have gone in there and won the conference championship. We'd be having a different conversation. But they fall short in the semifinals. For you guys, you were down there. Give us your synopsis of what, again, it's been – you know, about a week and a half since we've recorded what went right for them down the stretch and then what caught up with them when they had the chance there to go down and, and win the conference tournament. I think the the main thing for me that was kind of drawing was the way Lee Nelson kind of played. Mm -hmm. I mean, she had been crucial all season for the team. And then when it got to the point where it seemed like they needed her most, she just didn't have it. And there, there have been games this season where – like offensively, she hasn't been the best scorer or defensively, she's getting beat. But her playmaking has always been there. She's always been able to rack up the assists and make sure other her, her teammates on the floor are scoring and getting to the basket. Like even that, that wasn't there. Like the playmaking just was, I, I don't want to say terrible, but it was just not like she normally does. And I mean, I think it, it, the, the moment that encapsulates it the most is the, the one that cost them a season on that inbound pass where she's made that pass a hundred times this season and then just in the moment threw it right away and threw it away and just didn't even the team seemed like she was thinking about it too much i mean you mentioned the like it looked like things were lining up temple's way and we've said all year there are nine ten teams that could win the american and we were right because the nine and the ten seed played for the finals um <laughs> so it was just it was 
it I think the other thing too, Johnny, and you you sort of alluded to it, but there seemed like there was a rust factor with that double buy that they just couldn't shake off the slow start against Tulane. A team that they by all intents purpose like should have beaten, first of all, in regulation. Second of all, had a chance in the first overtime, couldn't get it done. Second overtime, not so much, but um I just think it caught up to them in the sense that they looked really gassed at the end of the Rice game. Um, T.R. East in particular, who who really put the team on her back in that second game because Demi Washington wasn't the factor that she could have been since she was in foul trouble. And, you know, Tristan Taylor played really well, but is still a freshman, like wasn't supposed to step into that role. Um, I just think there was a whole multitude of things that that caught up to them, but the biggest being that the American might not be the best conference in the country, but it's probably one of the most competitive for women's basketball. So nice segue in terms of setting this up. You mentioned the rust factor. So a clip that we want to play for you all is from yesterday. Like I said, a handful of us talked to Diane. Rymir asked Diane the question. I know you don't want to make excuses and you'll hear this in a second here. Basically asking her that question. Do you think, that the other teams not having the double buy played into it. And then Johnny followed up and said, can you kind of just take a step back and basically kind of like assess the season and what came out of yesterday. And you'll hear it here with, I think a fair amount of meeting, you know, they improved by nine games in the win column, but you, yes, I think Diane has celebrated their accomplishments, but she sounded someone like, like, like someone yesterday who was like, damn, like I am, we should not, be here right now. Now, again, no, they, I don't think they were expecting to get an at-large NCAA tournament bid, but no NIT bid, nothing. Their, their season is over, but she does not sound like somebody who is happy about where things ended up. So we're going to play this clip for you here from yesterday. Again, this is Ramir asking Diane about, you know, did the double buy have an effect? And then Johnny asking her about just kind of taking a step back. Can you appreciate what's happened here? And here's what she had to say. I know you don't want to make excuses. But, you know, these teams had a chance to, you know, get their rhythm to play a little bit. Do you think that actually, like, having, you know, a few days off impacted you and your team in anyway? What, before the tournament? Or yeah, now? Before, before you started. Before we, we started the tournament? Yeah, before you guys played. Yeah, I, you know, I, 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 I don't think so. Uh, I, I never want to look at it like that. Um, I think we we practiced and we went over the things. We went over the scouts. We knew who we were going to see and who was in our bracket. We went over the scouts. Um, but Rice played a, a tough, tough game. And uh, they have some good pieces on their team as well. And that, you know, we, we couldn't handle a little bit. So I don't think the time off, you know, I would hate to say that because then my kids will be wanting time off. But... Um, <laughs> No, but, but, you know, we prepared for it. Our coaches did great scouts, and uh, we, we slipped up on that, on that day against Rice, and, and Rice went on to do well in the championship game, and that was our missed opportunity. I know you, you mentioned that you guys, like the season you guys thought was going to continue, but have you, like now, in these like, couple hours after you realize it's over, have you had any time to reflect on like where you guys were last season? And how much you guys were able to do this year in such a short turnaround from how we things looked at that point? Yeah, you know, the, the reality of it is, is that we didn't not go into the postseason, which, you know, even after the tournament, I was already trying to focus on what we needed to do for next year. And then not getting in the tournament has just accelerated what I need to do to get us ready for next year and, uh, you know, putting the plans together for next year because I don't want to have that feeling again. So, you know, just like last year, I said we're not going to be in this position again. And uh, we jumped on it, and our staff jumped on it, and we had a turnaround year. And the same thing is going to happen next year. Hey, let's let's move this forward now uh, and look about – and look at, excuse me, what's ahead for them – Three new, you know, and I think something that we we didn't really haven't really talked about yet is a, a player who could contribute next season who's been sitting out. The three recruits that they signed. So again, in moving this forward, what do you see as the next steps for for this program? Obviously, they need to add some shooters. Uh, 
I think on one hand, in my humble opinion, I, I think may not maybe Diane didn't see it this way. I I've thought in some ways when you look at some of their shortcomings, maybe they overachieved, but she doesn't maybe see it that way. But what do you see for the future of this program? How quickly could these freshmen help them? Who gets better? What do you see for them next year and in the off season? Well, I think the immediate thing you look at is somebody that can consistently knock down the three. So you look at like Savannah Curry coming in as a freshman who could make an immediate impact out of West Town Academy. Um, I could see that being a factor, but I think the biggest thing is they need to hit the portal and they need to get bigs. They mm -hmm. need to get somebody that can score out of the post and space the floor a little better because that was one of their biggest issues was, you know, things were getting crowded on the perimeter. They weren't knocking down shots and they couldn't generate any offense. So you need somebody that can be in the post and grab rebounds like they're used to with Rain Tucker leaving. Um, but you also need somebody that can go and get you buckets. And Adina Webster could be that person. You know, she was last year, she was second in her class in scoring in the country. So, um, you know, she's a person that can score at all three levels and, and get her own basket. So that could be really good, but they need to, they need to get some sort of threat on offense that isn't just going to like keep the, cause a lot of the, the issues in the last couple of games were, they would get into a half court set and they couldn't find a bucket because they, they didn't have any sort of rhythm. They didn't have any sort of offensive play that they could go to that they knew would get them an open shot. It was a lot of standing still and ISO ball. Um, and that was ultimately their downfall because they couldn't hit shots off of it. So, And you guys said it would be their downfall if they didn't win this conference tournament. Right. And they, they would slow down the pace, which is not how they played basketball for most of the regular season. And it it's they suffered because of it. So if they're, they need somebody that now can you know set up in the half court and get their own basket because you know that's how it's going to alleviate when they have to slow down their pace of play johnny what i was referencing before they also get drew alexander added into the into the mix she had to sit out this year what are they getting in her i know i think after the the uh po the postseason press conference that Richardson had, she we were talking with her for a little bit on the side, and she mentioned Drew Alexander as someone that's going to come in and be a shooter for that team. And I, Declan, I I know you remember down there when we were in Texas, we went to a practice at Tristan Taylor's high school in Duncan in Duncanville, and I I told I told them she made like twelve shots in a row. She did not miss. Like yeah, she it was, she unreal. was unreal from three point range, and that's something that they didn't really have. They had Terry on Gary, who at times looked like the best shooter in the conference, and then at other times would go 0 for 8 from three-point range. They need a consistent shooter. We had mentioned Savannah Curry. She's someone that can come in and could be a, a consistent shooter. But Drew Alexander's been around this team. She knows the culture. She, um, Richardson said that they were working on her defense the entire time that she had to sit out. That was the main thing that she wanted the, her to get better at. And I think that's someone that can come in and – in, be implemented right away that's been around the team knows the system and can shoot really well i think that's someone that to keep your eye out for next season along with savannah curry and all the other incoming players all right so again we'll have more women's groups coverage for you throughout the next several weeks the off season i'm sure we'll be very busy the transfer portal being what it is uh things will continue uh to be eventful along that front if you are an alscoop.com subscriber you want to check out the basketball board. We've got some some really cool scheduling scoop for you all pertaining to the women's basketball program. We're not going to drop it here on the pod. We want to reward our subscribers for that. And again, if you have not yet subscribed to alscoop.com. What are you doing? I don't know. What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. So <laughs> good time to subscribe. Cool little piece of information on there as well about the next couple seasons and the schedule that I think people will be excited about this temple football team is now several practices into its spring season. The quarterback spoke this past weekend. We've gotten a, a couple of sessions with Stan Drayton, uh, a session with Danny Langsdorf as well. Spring football being what it is again, they're, I don't want to say they're not, they're not reinstalling a new offense. Danny Langsdorf did talk about the fact that obviously EJ Warner is a huge loss, but might be able to do a little bit more with these quarterbacks, Evan Simon, Clifton McDowell, even Forrest Brock, how they might be a tad more mobile. Um, we'll start with with today's session. Uh, Stan spoke, and uh, then it was a couple of the specialists. 
Ramir, you were there for today's session. Any takeaways from just anything that Stan had to add on Zoom following today's practice? He didn't really add much of note in terms of the quarterbacks. It was basically just, you know, they're competing, they're competing, they're competing, you know, coach speak essentially. And there are four practices in, and every guy has a shot to start. You would, you know, apparently every guy has a chance to start. But he did mention the running backs a little bit and how the running backs had flashed and how mainly how the the bigger backs, the power back that they have, um, Antoine Littleton and um Tyree Washington, those two didn't necessarily look as good to start camp because, you know, no pads. They're they're better with pads on and today was the first day of pads and they looked a lot better and you can actually see some of the things that they bring, you know, when the pads come on. He also talked about Jordan um, McGee and just his pre-draft process and how, you know, how good that's been for him, especially since, you know, before the season or before the combine, no one was really talking about Jordan McGee in draft circles. And now, like, his name is, has been implemented into draft circles because of his combine performance. Uh, other than that, Nothing really of note. The the tight end spoke. Um, Dante Adams was supposed to speak, but they switched him for Peter Clark last second. Okay. And the group just really talked about, or them, both him and um, James Delapesca, who also was a tight end, they kind of spoke just a little bit about the room and how I asked them about how, you know, how big of a loss is DMR and if they're going to be, how, especially how James is going to be able to take over that leadership role but other than that not really anything and you met you said stan mentioned today that he said that he he brought up I, was he asked about tyler douglas or did he just been talking about the quarterbacks he mentioned that tyler douglas's technique had improved he he um he brought that up himself he said tyler douglas his throw mechanics weren't he didn't say great but in like paraphrasing they weren't great last year but they have improved and he can see it more this year. Yeah, kind of interesting. And again, like Kyle says this, and I do enjoy this because, you know, for the most part, uh, Rod Carey did not work out at Temple, but he is an understatement, but he did say, you know, guys are allowed to get better. Someone like Tyler Douglas is allowed to get better, but I think we talked about this a few weeks ago. This is perception wise, nothing more that uh, it, it would seem like he is a tangible step behind Declan. I know you were trying to advocate for him a couple of weeks ago, but they brought Evan Simon out. They brought Clifton McDowell out. They brought Forrest Brock out. I haven't heard much at all about Tyler Douglas. Again, he's a red shirt freshman. We could be having a different conversation about him a year from now. Just thought it was kind of interesting that he, that he talked about him a little bit because I think he's probably a step behind in that competition. But again, it is March 19th, not August 19th. So, uh, we'll see again, people have asked, I think uh, there's a mailbag question about this in terms of like the vibe of the program, what we've seen, we are going to get a couple of open sessions to see, correct? Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. A couple, yeah, a couple Saturday ones. Yeah. Yeah. A couple Saturday sessions. So we have not really seen anything significant at practice with our own eyes. It's just asking the coaches about what's going on, but getting to know the quarterbacks a little bit more hearing Danny Langsdorf say, you know, I feel like we might be able to do, a little bit more. He was talking about Evan Simon saying he's a little bit more sneaky athletic than some people think. Um, but yeah, get the sense it is a wide open competition. We've talked about the multitude of running backs. Uh, Everett Withers was on last week, talked about, hey, you know, we just, you know, we didn't have the personnel to run a three, four. Feels like he has that personnel now. So uh, we'll have more coverage for you again in the coming weeks with spring football. All right. So we've got quite a few mailbag questions to get to here uh a couple of fun ones that we'll get to on twitter oh ryan snuck in a, ryan max snuck in a question we'll get to his a little bit later temple tough off the hook three from twitter if you created a temple sports mount rushmore who would be on it okay i should know this real quick i think this should be our sort of guiding light on this i should know this i don't how many faces are on Mount? oh rushmore? my four god four. oh my god <laughs> four Four, John. Okay. Who are the four, John? Who are the four on Mount Rushmore, John? John, who are the four on Mount Rushmore? Not zero percent chance, by the way. Gary Sinise. uh, (laughs) (laughs) Will Farrell. No, uh, it's Lincoln, Lincoln, Washington. Mm -hmm. 
uh, uh, one of the Roosevelts. Yes. Which one? <laughs> Teddy, right? Yes. It's not okay. FDR. I, yeah. I didn't think you were going to get Teddy. So the other one's still pretty obvious. Yeah, Teddy's like the tough one. Yeah. Jefferson. Yes. Look okay. at you. All right. Good job, Jay. Uh, yeah, you guess I what? didn't if, have a ton if, of confidence guess in what, myself. John? I thought if maybe... this was if this was Billy Madison, you just advanced to the second grade. Congratulations. <laughs> I was just <laughs> thinking, are you smarter than a third grader? That's what we were playing right there. Yeah. I kind of felt like in my mind's eye, I thought like maybe there's a fifth one out there. All right. Mm-mm. All right. So let's say yeah, as we're as we're, yeah, it's a different Mount Rushmore. That's uh, it's like the little there's just like there's that little knockoff Statue of Liberty on three twenty two and that godforsaken stretch on your way to Penn State. What if there was just like a little mini Mount Rushmore in that? That'd be yeah. sweet. Yeah, yeah. And that's the Temple one. And who are you putting on there? All right, four <laughs> people on the Temple Sports Mount Rushmore. John Cheney's a given, obviously. Yeah, I think you got to put Matt Rule on there because of how much. He rejuvenated the football program, but as I think about this, is there a Matt Rule without an Al Golden? Mm. I see. That's mm. a good one. That's a good question. And is Peter Lee, of course, on there because he's the guy who hired John Cheney and said, "Here's this guy who is who's won a Division Two national championship. He's not necessarily a flashy hire, but um." And then you got to put like, I mean, do you go two coaches slash administrators and two players? So I don't know. It's just I love this question. It's a good question. If we're if is we're this, keeping is this just right it's tough. What's no, that right anybody. I think I know where you're I gonna go. I think you can put anybody from here. I think yeah, I know who you're um, gonna say. I was gonna say Nikki Frank. I don't yeah. think you cannot not put her on there. Yeah, I think Nikki Frank's yeah. on there. Uh, yeah, an Olympian Hall of Famer. Yeah, great answer. Yeah. I have one. Nobody else in this call will will know it, John. But you should know him. He he, look, Bill he Pickles looks Kennedy? he looks over you while you work. <laughs> Al Schreier. Al Schreier. I want Al Schreier yeah. on there. Long time SID. I think he was here sixty years. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Al Schreier. It's a good answer. Yeah. We went to his uh John we and I made the evening uh, news for his uh his viewing. Or yes. not even his viewing. His uh Yeah. Had a bit of a, a misadventure on the way there. Uh, sure. I'm, uh, I'm not shocked. Al Schreier. I'm not surprised. So who are we going with? We have Al Schreier is under consideration. Probably going to be on there. John Cheney. I'll be on there. Yeah. Nikki Frank. Yeah. Yeah. I think what we don't go have right player. now. Yeah, we don't have a, yeah, we don't have a player. Like who's the player? Yeah, that's that's my I, thing. I, I know. That's my thing is who, like, Do you there, Klecko, there really isn't you one Mark that's Mason, out of bug. Like, Mark Mason, yeah. even in addition to Mark Mason, yeah, both of them. He, <laughs> Sorry, they named the city after him in uh, in Georgia. Uh, I don't know. I think. <laughs> Do you go Klecko? He's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But it, it like when I think of it, like, did he elevate the program? Yes. <laughs> that's why you put him on Mount Rushmore. Yeah, there was number one in the nation. Like, like I mean, the, well, that's I, what I mean. If you're so going, then, yes. if you're going. Players, I think Klecko's in the mix. Mark Macon's in the mix. Yeah. Uh, is Don in the mix? Don didn't play. I was gonna say Don Taylor. I feel like Don's a good yeah. answer. Dawn, I, I don't know. She I was. Mean, she she didn't do. She had a lot of her success. And to be outside, honest, yeah, outside. Yeah, from the outside. From if you take okay, away yeah. like us, like if the non-Temple people aren't gonna associate her with Temple, they're gonna say South Carolina. Mm-hmm. That's fair. True. Or Virginia. I mean, is an Eddie Jones or an Aaron McKee on there? That's why I don't think they had good enough like professional yeah. careers like Mark to be that. Over. Yeah. yeah, I think you do Mark. Yeah, over. yeah, they gotta be. Yeah, there's a. It's I, I like that question. It's an interesting question because you're you're thinking of like impact and influence. Yeah, I think Nikki, Nikki Frank certainly Cheney. Kyle, if you had to choose between, I'm not even saying they're definitely on the Mount Rushmore. If you had to choose between Al Gold and a Matt Rule, who do you put up there? 
I, I think it's rule. I get what you're saying. Like, is there a Matt rule without Al Golden? And like, if he's the one that hired Matt rule and, and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. And, and even from taking that away, like he's the one that laid the foundation for the program to kind of take that leap. But I think what rule accomplished in like that 2015, 2016 season was just so much higher than anything Golden ever accomplished that it kind of separates him. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I really can not. only hope that I can only hope that Al Golden sitting somewhere in a, like maybe a coffee shop in South Bend is listening to this podcast and he reaches out to Kyle and goes, bro. So I welcome the call. You, I welcome the conversation. Yeah. Flip we'll the talk. switch and realize Flip what it. you did wrong. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know what? Listeners tweet us your Mount Rushmore. You know, let's yeah. hear from you. Yes. I like that. Tweet us your Mount right. Rushmore hashtag in order, in order to keep Rushmore. it on one thing. Hashtag Declan showed up at one ten today. He just posted on Twitter. We'll be able to click it. And hashtag we'll see all Declan is here. Hashtag Declan, Declan is here. Right. I like hashtag Declan. You know, like people are wondering where hashtag. Kate Middleton is. I was wondering the same thing about Declan for the first 10 minutes. Or is Declan? Yeah, the only difference is I didn't send you a Photoshop picture of me, you know, That's to pretend true. that I'm still here. You know what I'm saying? I think, you, I think I you've sent up. me I think you've sent me crude Photoshops before in the past. Like crudely done Photoshops. Yeah, I have, but unrelated. Unrelated. Yeah. Yes. I've got some good ones. Yeah. Crude meaning poorly edited. Correct. Let's, yes. Let's Correct. That. Yes. Declan's on Picolage. Kid. Shout out Picolage. <laughs> no free shout out. Uh, some of the other some of the other questions to get to here from our subscribers on our Al Scoop message boards. The first one, a two parter from the screen name Sunny Al. Football for those who have talked to the players and the coaches during the early spring practices. What does bring your read as a whole? This was a reference I said earlier. We got a couple of football questions in the mail back here. Again, Sonny Al have not seen any of the the practices, anything in depth, anything substantial. We are going to get a couple, uh, like I said, access to a couple of open sessions. So um, that's more than we've gotten in the past. The the read as a whole, I I, I thought again, it's one quote. I thought it was interesting when Stan in the first session said he he called it like a setting of the reset button or a pressing of the reset button. I'm sorry. And I think that, look, the, the, the staff knows what's expected of them. They know that the two, three win seasons, regardless of how much they had to make up for is not going to cut it. I think there is this sense of like, okay, let's, let's catch our breaths. We have an influx of more than 40 new players. We're not going to hit on all of them, but let's see how many of them we can hit on. Again, if you're an Everett Withers, it's like, okay, I want to run a 4-3 base. Let's see if a lot of this influx of talent in terms of new defensive backs and new linebackers can help me. I know that's not much for you, um, but I think the the sense that we've gotten is some excitement around a lot of new position battles. Quarterback's wide open. Running back is wide open. Yeah. I mean, really, what position kind of isn't Ooh. wide open? So I don't know. Um, Hunter, I think Dante Atten's got. It. Yeah, Dante yeah. Atten's your punter. Yeah, he'll be all right. Um, <laughs> you know, um, I don't know, but we'll probably have a better handle on that on that question. It, like like Grammar said, it's like everybody's upbeat, everybody's positive. They're just getting into pads. There's a lot to follow. There are a lot of storylines that will come out of it. But like I thought, like the the hitting the reset button, I thought was was kind of interesting they're seeing is as, as an opportunity to refresh but they know they have a lot of a lot of ground to make up there for a basketball second part of Sonny Al's question how much does a run in the American Athletic Conference final potentially help Adam Fisher keep some players from transferring out despite the NIL opportunities offered elsewhere great question don't think it hurts them at the end of the day look I think every player that Temple wants to keep it, yeah, Temple's vulnerable there. You know, people could look at what Heiser Miller said and uh, what he said, what he did, and say, wow, you know, we could really use him. As we're recording this at 2.01 p.m. on a Tuesday afternoon, no one to our knowledge has hit the portal. But, yeah, I, I, I think it could help Adam. Again, NIL is going to have to complement what they just did on the court. But... You know, we'll, we we shall see. I, I do think that giving ESPN access to the locker room, access to the to the you know the in game huddles, yeah, it was like a walking commercial for Temple for for a couple of days. Yeah. Um, 
and I know this isn't exactly what you're asking, Sonny Al, but a couple of people have asked me just, and again, it's, it's just one of those basic, basic reminders in life of like, oh, when the team starts playing well, you see how much it can rejuvenate people. Some people who are like skeptical of the media are like, oh, you guys thrive on negativity. You must love. No, it, it's, I, it's fun when you cover a winning team. It's fun when you can cover a winning program, whether it's Temple or, or anywhere else, because humanity comes through and you can see some of the positive things that come from it. And I just had some people who hadn't heard from a while reach out like, wow, look at this. Temple's really on a run. Adam Fisher seems like he's cut out to be a college basketball coach in 2024. Is that genuine? And yeah, I, I think it is. I can't say I've known Adam Fisher for years, but I think that is who he is. And amongst other things, I think you're you're seeing, like we were talking about before, something shining through where, you know, all that stuff where he's like, okay, we're okay. Take a step, take a step, take a step back, take a breath. We're going to be okay. And it actually worked for him. Again, I think they lost out at the end of the day because UAB is just flat out a better basketball team. Anybody could tell you that. But yeah, I think, sure, it helps them. And it at least gives the core players who they would want to return, to the best of our knowledge, I'm sure it gives them something to think about. Again, what's there in terms of NIL opportunities, playing time, improvement minutes, all that stuff to retain them. But the culture of the program, and again, I say this as someone who has a ton of respect for Aaron McKee. But I think the culture and the vibe of the program, even though they, you know, they they lost ten games in a row this season, they did not beat Houston last season. Uh, they didn't beat Houston this season like they did last season, but certainly it helps them. Now we'll see what happens over the next few weeks. But I, that's about all I could say there. Again, buckle in. Nothing surprises me when it comes to the portal, but certainly, certainly helps them because if you have whatever it comes or does not come of the U.S. integrity investigation wherever that is or isn't if they if if that's your headline if that's your national headline and then they go down to lose to utsa in the regular season finale and they bow out in the first round of the conference tournament the the mood around the program right now is not great mm -hmm. and yeah. what a different story we're telling now so it certainly 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 can't hurt them and i do think that adam has proven to be this way throughout and people just got to see it on a national stage and when you see them beating teams with better rosters sure it absolutely can help them how much we'll see well and the other part of it too is you mentioned like getting results and you get to buy into the program that is now finally getting something in the win column mm -hmm. and we re mentioned it earlier today but now the fans are buying into it too and the you know, the, the tough fund had like a 200% increase of mm -hmm. uh, revenue in the past 72 hours because of what people like Kevin Nagandi and other alumni were able to do in, in getting people excited about donating to the tough fund. Mm -hmm. So now you can use that money in turn and either retain the players that you want to keep, or you can go out and get some, you know, some higher level talent. And I think that there, there is like so much to be said for that because even a couple of weeks ago, we were like, ah, you're going to lose like five, six players in the portal potentially because you cannot compete with these teams that are going to come in and see somebody like a Jordan Riley who had such a good season, has a lot of athleticism, has a lot that can be, you know, maybe potentially used on a power five. Um, and you just you cannot compete with that. And now all of a sudden, maybe they can or at least it, it, their odds get a little better mm -hmm. because of what they were able to do so. Um, I feel like I, I read somewhere in a comment, somebody saying winning this, this proves that winning helps everything and like, yes and no, but also like, it's easier to buy into a program that went to a finals, you know, in the American athletic conference and beat, you know, a, a tournament team than it is to, you know, end on the, the sort of 10 game losing streak, very little hope and the U.S. integrity thing, like you mentioned. Well, yeah, and, and Johnny and Marmir, before I get to you guys on this and the, the other questions we have ahead, again, for those of you who don't know this, just for context, had they gone to the NCAA tournament, they would have been, I think, Holy Cross in 2016 was the only other team that would have that, that went to the tournament with the win total that Temple would have had. Now, we saw that it was why NC State won five games in five days to get to the, to get to the NCAA tournament. Prior to that, it was UConn as the only other program that did what Temple was trying to do. And and almost, when I say almost did, obviously they were never really close against UAB, but the fact they even cut it from like 26 to, yeah. to 13 or 12 down oh, the yeah. stretch, 
was something. So, I mean, the whole the whole vibe again. The irony of all this is like they they were like yes, there were a couple of games this year they just weren't in, but it was a mix of like I think we kind of knew going into it, it was going to be a rebuilding season. We knew at the beginning of the season that they needed more help in the portal. We know now at the end of the season that they still need more help in the portal, which we'll dovetail into our next question here. But they were out of they were never really out of a lot of games. And when it finally started to pay off for them, pay off to them for them in the face of whatever adversity you perceived they were facing, to see it finally pay off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I hadn't seen that much energy this past weekend, the end of last week and into this weekend, it honestly felt like one of those early two thousands March weekends or once Fran Dunphy started to get things going where people were just kind of rejuvenated. It's just one of those simple human nature things like, yeah. oh yeah, forgot how this felt like. So yes, I think it certainly helps. More on this from another Al Scoop subscriber, Temple Al's alum, 1620 is the screen name. Any inside knowledge of potential men's basketball players hitting the transfer portal? The staff seems to be recruiting the portal, which indicates scholarships are opening up. Well, first things first, Sam Hoffman's out of eligibility. Right. Steve Settle is not. Steve Settle has another year. Matteo Piccarelli has another year. I believe we said this on a previous episode. Just because Jaleel White walked on senior day just means that he's set to graduate. It does not necessarily mean he's leaving. I've not talked to Jaleel White about his future plans. I've not talked to any of the players about their future plans. They're going to be recruiting the portal regardless scholarships don't have to open up for you to recruit the portal. The staff knows that they could use two, maybe even three starters. I would, if you were asking me to guess and speculate, which I shouldn't do, would I be surprised if Emmanuel Ocpomo graduates and moves on? No, I would not. Would I be surprised if, I'd be surprised if Deuce Roberts is on the roster next year. I could see Tosh Tweet not being on the roster next year. There's going to be some movement. Beyond that, I don't know. Again, all of this boils down to end of year meetings, NIL opportunities, and then these guys weighing like, oh, I like what I saw over the last four or five days. The belief is there. The evidence is there. It's no longer faith-based. I can see what's possible. So I don't have any quote-unquote inside knowledge of who's hitting the portal because I, I, it would be irresponsible for us to say, I think right. this guy is going to leave because it's yeah. it's – Kind of harder to predict this year. Everything last year tracked. Like, hey, Caleb Fowles playing a lot better basketball at Arkansas. Did not see him coming back. I think that was best for both parties. But Damian Dunn going, expected. Everyone else going, even down to to Nick Jordan, expected. Now the vibe's a little different. So no, no super, super inside knowledge at this point. Any speculation we would be doing would be irresponsible. Second part, which kind of goes back to Sonny Al's question. Also, general reactions regarding the reported increase in NIL donations from the conference tournament run. It seems as if this team, although it went through a historically bad regular season, may have just pushed the program forward in ways nobody thought was possible. Great second part to the question. This refers back to what Declan talked about a few moments ago. Yeah, within 72 hours, the Tough Fund, which is, again, if you're hearing about the Tough Fund for the first time, the Tough Fund is the the only Temple collective that I know of that's out there. Got more than 100 new donations. There's been significant activity and conversations among some key stakeholders, I've been told. So, yes, I'd say there's some significant momentum that was not there before. So, yeah. General reaction to it, yeah. They did well this weekend. Yeah, they did. Everything helped. I, I have been hearing about just some momentum that was not there before happening at the right time. It's happening at the time where it has to happen because, again, the portal opened up yesterday. And this is, I hate to say it sounds so cheesy, it's the new normal. It's been here for a while. So, mm-hmm. yeah, a lot of significant momentum. A three-part question from one of our alongside, longtime subscribers, the Hick. How did the coaching staff get buy-in among players and keep the tournament run going? You guys were down there. And I think even if, even if you weren't down there, I think you saw it. Like I said before, like it was the ESPN coverage was like a walking commercial for Temple. I think that these guys, my, and I, I want to bounce this around to you guys too. I think they got buy-in the coaches did by being the same way all throughout the season, not changing their tune I would have been surprised if they had been this way, but they weren't like used car salesmen. They kept saying, 
trust the process, trust the process. Don't worry about the results. The results are going to come. It's, it was hard for Al Golden to sell that for a football team back in 2006, even harder to sell it in 2024 in the era of like the NIL, NIL and transfer portal. But I think they got them to buy in by just not being any different than they were before. And they finally got the results. But again, you guys were down in Fort Worth. I was not Wanted to be there. My mom's been dealing with COVID. She's okay. Had planned to be there, but would have loved to have been there with you guys. But um, how did they get the buy-in? What did you guys see beyond the obvious, or is it just the obvious? I mean, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head with the being the same they have been throughout the whole season. I mean, I think the, the key thing that, like, for me is throughout the ten-game losing streak, it was this. They were the same the whole time. They were mm-hmm. in games. They were they were right there for multiple times against teams that were better than them, more talented. But Temple took them down to the wire, and every time it was the same response of like the we're doing this together, we're gonna win to, win together, lose together, trust the process, we're gonna keep doing it the way that the way that we do it, and the results are gonna come. And I think I think the the turning point was like after getting smacked by UAB, they could have easily gone down to U- UTSA that game. Mm-hmm. UTSA was up. In um the towards the beginning of that second half, mm-hmm. they could have easily folded. Mm-hmm. But I think the way that they came together in that second half and that buzzer beater by Hasir Miller, I think that kind of flipped the switch and was like, no, like we like we hit we hit our stride towards towards the end of the season. We're gonna go down to Fort Worth and and shock people. Mm-hmm. Like, and then I think they they won that next game against UTSA and the confidence had just snowballed and mm-hmm. they just stuck together. The results started to come and I think they just kept going the whole way. And we also saw it all season. Like it wasn't, it would be very easy to, for Adam to lean into the cliche of the togetherness thing, you know, like, oh, we're this team's together, this team's together. Like that's kind of the classic underdog type mentality, right? That we heard um, all throughout his post game pressers at the, um, at the tournament, but that's how they've been all year is they've, they've fought for him. They've gone to, you know, they've, they've, they've been a good team chemistry wise. So I think, you know, it's easy to sit here and, you know, if you just watch the tournament run and be like, ah, you know, yeah, togetherness, that's cool. But like, is that a real thing? I think it is. I think it's a legitimately like mm-hmm. going to, you know, it's it's part of Adam's M.O. almost. So I think that is a big reason why I think they they genuinely do care about him. I don't think it's like, you know, a PR type thing. I think it is a genuine like feeling in the locker room, even though, you know, for some programs, it might not be the way I, it just feels authentic. And I think the, the, uh, like, while, like, it was, like, cliche in the moment, but, like, I think even just the fact that, like, every player went up to the stand after they lost, like, it was, like, 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 it it was cliche, but it also was cool in the moment to, like, like, obviously we weren't down there, but we got to see Jeff Nyberg had tweeted out a video of it and they posted a photo of it later that day. But I think just the way that they all stood on that stand and they were all paying attention and listening and harping on every word that Adam said to every question. I think they like, just it show like encapsulated this season the way that they were the way the lows the highs but they still continue to fight for Adam the whole way. Yeah. I think one thing that good teams have regardless of what sport it is it's short-term memory. And they went like 10 game losing streak almost like it didn't even matter. They what mm-hmm. they won what four of their last five and in the regular season and the one loss was a, they got, like Johnny said, they got smacked. They they lost by what? 20, 20, 29 points, almost 30 points. 28. Yeah. 100 to 72. Yeah. They went and they forgot about it and they continued to like things like that. 10 game losing streaks, losing by that much, like those type of things. Like if, if, if your team isn't where it's supposed to be, like it can mentally, at least it can get, they can snowball the wrong way and mm-hmm. you and players end up, you know, pointing fingers, blaming each other. And, you know, it can get bad really quickly. And this team had short, a short term memory and was able to put those things behind them. And every time it was next game, next game, next, next game. And even when you are beating teams, you can go on a 10, you can go on a 10 game win streak. And if you don't have short term memory and, and get too caught up in yourself, like you can, you can trip up and stumble up and, yeah, they had that short term memory and they didn't do any of those things. And I think that helped contribute to their run. Like, OK, we beat who they beat first. We beat UTSA. All right, let's move on to the next team. We beat them. Let's move on to the next team. And you you got to have 
that type of mentality if you're going to, you know, be successful. Yeah. If there's no buy-in, it's not going to, it's going to fold quickly. Two more questions here from the Hick. The second one, any updates on portal recruiting? Hopefully a, a focus on size so that all the tweeners can play close to their true positions. Again, if we had reputable, well-sourced information, we would put it on. And now the Hick is one of our subscribers. So we would put out to, to him and our subscribers, nothing that I would put that out there as of yet, but yes, this staff knows they know they need a big, they know they need another point guard. I think that ideally they would like to play high Sierra Miller off the ball some as well. That's not to say that Quante Berry cannot get better and continue to get better as a point guard or a ball handler. You start to, to see him get some more minutes, maybe a guy like Zion Stanford. I don't, I don't see Zion as a, as a pure point. I don't think he ever will be, but again, if they, if they have more capable ball handlers, they know they need a big, they know they need another point guard. We, they could conceivably have two or three new starters next year. The, the third question from the Hick, what is the coaching focus with the next group? Read in parentheses, please work on improving handles and shooting. Yeah. I think mean, you said it. They know they need more capable ball handlers with more length on defense. They can, they can improve what they do on defense. I'm not trying to make it sound so easy, but part of how they were able to slow down FAU. We really haven't talked specifically about that, that, that FAU game, but now Vlad Golden got his points certainly, but it could have been even worse. And they, they knew they had to play a lot of zone because like Emmanuel Okpomo is a great kid. He's really smart, but he's a backup big and they had to go to a zone. They don't have a roster where you say, Oh look, ton of length here. They can play like UAB can play a one, three, one zone, bring it up, trap out of it for a reason. They're long, they're athletic. I wouldn't say the temple's super long and athletic. Sam Hoffman does it more with muscle and a lower base. You know, he's stronger, but he's going to be going. So I think that they know they need some length. Again, they will be coming in as freshmen, true freshmen. But if Aiden Tobias and Dylan Batie have good summers in the weight room, you're adding two guys that are good, capable offensive players. Aiden Tobias, and we should say, Delaware State Player of the Year. Declan, you want to get your quick flex in here that they did not win a state championship because they lost to your alma mater? No, no, because I like Aiden a lot. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, and yeah. plus Sally's lost in the finals anyway. So there's yeah. no point in bragging yeah. about second place. Yeah, but they need, you know, they need, yes, the hick. They need a better ball handler. They need to be better ball handlers. Jordan Riley turned the ball over too much. Certainly not the only player on the team that turned the ball over too much, but better shooting, better ball handling, better size. They know that. Uh, Diamond and Broad with two questions here to close us out. Ryan, we'll uh, we'll let this one, we'll let we'll let Ryan's question marinate. All these guys are working to prove themselves. The Ryan Max, the Jason the Avises of the world. Uh, again, want to give a shout out to, to Jake Abel and Jacob Smedley who were down there for WHIP. Also did some freelance work for us. Frau Scoop wrote some great stuff. Check them out on the website. I mean, Ryan, we love you. We appreciate the question. You're doing some some good work for us. I think you're uh I think you're running from it. I'm not gonna lie to you. I think it's a little little crazy that we're not answering the question here. All right, well, I think we got to we got to well, no, this isn't directed toward me. This is directed toward the boss man, you know what I'm saying? Who's my favorite intern in the 2026 class? Yeah. I don't have a favorite. That's like asking me to to choose between What power rank them? No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Come on, John, stand on business. What are we doing? Kyle's Kyle's yeah, Kyle's Kyle's more Kyle loves the power rankings. I love a good power. Well, a power ranking. ranking hasn't come out in months now. Yeah, well, talk to talk Kyle about that. He had to dip out a little early, but um, next we'll, week. Uh, yeah, next week we'll. Uh, that, that I mean, sometimes yeah, but sometimes you vault up in the power rankings because you say you, you say something that makes Kyle laugh. Okay, and he'll say, "I always loved you." Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. sorry for being uh, funny and charismatic. Yeah, sorry. Um, what do you want me to say, <laughs> Ryan? We'll let him we'll sit on that one for for a little while. Yeah. All right. Could you imagine Ryan coming over to my office door like John? Did you did you get my question? That's what's gonna happen the did second we open question? this door. What did you think? Did you really answer it honestly? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you said it. Diamond so Rod's last two questions. What's that? I said you said it too loud. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. We love our Ryan. We do. <laughs> so, last two questions here from Diamond and Broad is the screen name. Why is Temple Athletics so resistant to NIL and the tough fun particularly? I know they had two informational sessions, but it seems athletics has zero interest in promoting NIL. I don't know that that's the case anymore. They have links to the tough fun and other opportunities on their website. Do I think, we've talked about this a million times, 
do I think the temple was as well prepared for name, image, and likeness as Pitt and Penn State and some of their regional and national peers? No. We've been over that. But I, I don't know that they I don't know that we can say they have zero interest in it anymore. No. Uh, I don't know that that will be fair and accurate. Look, we can see that they're playing catch up, but uh, to say they have zero interest now wouldn't I wouldn't be fair. I do think it's more interest than when Sam O'Neill and I released our story in November. Yeah, I think there's been a lot of improvement mm-hmm. since that point, but I mean it is definitely a step, if not multiple steps, behind. But it is like slowly starting to get. Well, yeah, there's been some significant movement from what I can understand over the last few weeks, not only on the basketball front, but the football front, which is, you know, happy for those teams. You know, they they need it. Those student athletes need it. The coaches need it. You need good players. Yes, the chemistry's got to be there. The team building's got to be there. I'm not saying we just spent like a full segment talking about the culture of the basketball program. Right. I think Diane has that. Adam has that. But players certainly help win games, as we know. So, um, Last question. I'm sorry, Diamond Bra. I got nothing for in this one. Any insight on finalists for the university president position and their opinion on athletics? No. No. I mean, like, all, all that we know is what the Board of Trustees has put out there that they're starting the interview process now. So uh, I think we'll have a better handle on that in, uh, in April. But I want to thank you all for uh, being patient with us again. We took a, took a week off to see how um, – things were going to fall into place with both basketball programs and uh, came back with a lot of cool stuff to talk about. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Declan, thank, thank you, you for, for getting out of bed. Okay. And engaging That's in crazy. temple sports talk like with that. us. That's yeah, crazy. Say like you know, that, we love but... you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, whatever. yeah. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, be, we'll be back with uh, obviously more. The portals here might have some recruiting updates for you guys next week, some roster updates. We'll see how this all plays out. Uh, But uh, thank you, as always, for listening, and we'll talk to you soon.